Hi, my name's Sarah Hudson. I'm a finance broker and money coach, and welcome to my series of videos called Let's Talk Money. During this series of videos, I'll be interviewing various different women on their relationships with money, what they learned about money when they were growing up, and how they feel about money and, and the future now. So let's get started. I'd like to welcome Sarah Bruce to this edition of Let's Talk Money. Sarah is a driving instructor, passionate about road safety and working with parents, NDIS clients and older Australians. Sarah also has launched a new business called The Reinvention Strategist, a program supporting women who have lost their way and want to change direction and reinvent themselves. Sarah lives in Frankston, Victoria with her partner and her two daughters. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me. I've known Sarah for quite a while, but I don't know how many times we've met in person, but we've spent a, a fair bit of time over Zoom of late, meeting at various networking groups, which has been awesome. So I just wanted to ask you, Sarah, what do you remember about money growing up? I don't remember having a very good relationship with it. My, my dad was self-employed. My mum was a stay-at-home mum till we hit teenage years. But I remember we used to have fantastic holidays and money was never an issue in terms of if we needed something, we just went and got it. But I was never educated around it, not even in high school, really. So when I used to get my first part-time job, I'd barely have the cash in the hand and I'd be at Southland the next day spending it. <laughs> so I wouldn't say my earliest recollections were very good. But there was plenty, plenty around you when you were growing up. Yeah, yeah, there was never an issue there. Yeah, I was very lucky in that regard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what is one mistake that you've made financially that you'd like to share with us? Well, back when I was 18 and I got my first personal loan for my car, I didn't know what I'd signed and I walked into the National Bank to get my little cheque to pay for my car and they handed me a bank card. Remember the old bank cards? Yes, yes. <laughs> Here's a credit card for you, $500 limit. Go and have some fun. Well, of course, I did the same thing again. Mm. Straight off to Southland and had maxed it out within by the end of the day. <laughs> Wow. Of course, when you're, of course, when you're only an 18 year old and you're not earning much, I think it took me between six and eight months to pay off. <laughs> what a fright you must have got with that. I did. And my dad tried to tell me, be careful, these can be dangerous. But I thought, oh, it won't be that bad. It's only 500. And you don't understand the concept around accumulative interest that goes with that. Mm. So I think by the time I paid off, it probably cost me about $800. So yeah. after that, I cut it up. <laughs> Uh, wise idea, wise. It was. Mm. What has been your most expensive, extravagant purchase? Um, I can't really conclude a house or a car in that, can I? No, that's what I thought. thought I'd take out the, the house or car. <laughs> something that was extravagant. Um, for me, it would probably be after my marriage fell apart. I, I ended up with a crappy TV, so I went and bought myself a beautiful big flat screen TV. That was my extravagant purchase because I thought you know what he got the good telly I didn't I deserve to have something nice to watch so yeah I think it was probably a very expensive television mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know we we have all grown up with tvs in our house so that's the sort mm -hmm. of thing we want isn't it yeah well, that's what I thought it's cheap entertainment and I haven't got to worry about going out all the time so that, that's definitely it's still going strong so that's good and I do know one thing about you and that is that you're a very good budgeter Yes, that's one thing I have learned. I didn't. I started working for the National Bank back in my early 20s and quickly rose to being a bank manager within four years and I learned very quickly the idea of budgeting. And so that after that credit card debacle as an 18-year-old, I learned very quickly you need to be smart about it. So I've always been very cautious about money ever since, even when I sold my house 11 years ago. The mortgage was four years ahead. So I just I, I love to be in control. So that way, if something happened, I couldn't didn't have an income for a month. I know I could survive. So yeah, I pay all my bills weekly, and everything is always in credit, yeah. Uh, yeah. other than the mortgages. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really good advice. Absolutely. Mm. So what made you go into business for yourself? It was around about the time that my marriage fell apart, and I couldn't get a job, and I was working at Vic Roads as a license tester. And I decided, I, I found every time that the kids had footy training or there was a dental appointment or anything like that, I couldn't get home in time to take them. And then one day a driving instructor said, have you thought about changing sides? So after doing the training for six months, I quit the week before Christmas 2013 
and have never looked back. I've been able to base my business around my family and be there for them for any time they needed me. And it's and it's been the best decision I've made. And my kids even say to me now, yeah. in the early days while I was focused on marketing, they've been thankful that I've been there for them for the last eight years, nearly eight years now. Yeah, so that real time right. flexibility. Absolutely. I can choose when I have holidays. I can choose when I have a day off. If I don't want to work tomorrow or I can't, that I'm, my diary looks at that far in advance now. But in the early days, I could, yeah, I could plan ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's been great. And I, can, and I can never get Christmas holidays off, which was the worst part. So this way I get every Christmas off now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that. Love planning around flexibility. That's awesome. Exactly, yeah. So my last question for you, Sarah, is what does financial freedom mean to you? Not having to be reliable on the pension when I retire. I've seen my, I know my mum's very comfortable and she's a full pensioner, but she copes. But I see so many scary stories of people not being able to afford their council rates or not being able to afford to fix their car if it breaks down. I want to have that financial freedom. So when I do get to my retirement age, I don't have to worry about those sorts of things. So that's what a freedom means to me. Fantastic. I love that. Mm. It's a, yeah, it's absolutely about choice, isn't it? It's just yeah, absolutely. Choice and, and we mm. don't have to have to have a lot of money. We just need no. to, there is enough. That's like you and I both agree. All we need is a tiny house and a little plot of land and we're happy to live our lives out there. Absolutely. I think the sooner that councils start changing their view on tiny houses and we can create communities, communities yeah. for people to grow old together at, that yeah. aren't necessarily your standard traditional retirement villages would just be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with that. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very much for being a guest on Let's Talk Money. It's been a real pleasure chatting with you and I really wish you all the best with your new business. I think that's just such an incredible thing that's so well needed out there in, in our communities today. Yes, I'm very excited about the future. I can't wait to launch or to grow the business. That'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs>